Today we will discuss the most underrated yet the most critical part of microservices architecture, the communication. Microservices architecture does not only mean to break things into small manageable services. The real magic begins when these different services start talking to each other and get the things done collectively. If the communication between services is not correct, then even the best architected services are useless. We can say communication is the spinal cord of microservices architecture. If its design is weak, then it will make the entire system lag. Communication will decide how the data will flow in the application, how the system will recover in case of a failure, whether a system is scalable or not, and whether the system will lag or work smoothly. So it becomes very important to design how your services interact with each other considering the business requirements. There are mainly two ways for services to communicate, synchronous and asynchronous communication. Now this is very important from the interview point as well. One of the most asked interview questions from microservices is how your microservices interact with each other. So let's first start with synchronous communication. Communication is synchronous if let's say service A calls service B and service A will keep waiting till the service B returns the response. It's a blocking type of communication. So let's say if service B takes 30 seconds to respond, then the caller thread of service A will not be able to perform any other operation and will be stuck. This makes the service A and service B very tightly coupled because slowness in service V will directly impact the service A's performance. Asynchronous on the other hand is non-blocking. That means service A will call service B and will not wait for service B to respond in blocking mode. So in this, service A is free to perform other tasks and when service B is ready with the response, then service A will process it. This makes the system loosely coupled. So now service B can take as much time as it needs to process and generate the response. Service A will not be blocked due to this. To understand the core benefits, let's discuss a very simple example. Suppose you are submitting a request in a web application for processing, which first goes to service A and then service A will call service B. Now if the communication between services is synchronous and service B takes some time to process the request, in that case you as a user will be stuck on the same page until you get a response back, which is really bad from the user experience perspective. On the other hand, if the communication between services and frontend is asynchronous, in that case, when you submit a request, then service A will acknowledge it and return an acknowledgement back to frontend. In the background, services can communicate synchronously or asynchronously. And once they are ready with the response, the user will be notified. The main benefit of asynchronous communication is that the caller is now free to perform some other tasks. So after you get an acknowledgement of the request submission, you are no longer struck on the same page. You can browse through the other features of the application and once the response is ready, you will get a notification to check the output. Now before we go deep into both of these strategies, let me ask you a question. You can provide your answer in the comment section. So whatever we have discussed so far about synchronous and asynchronous communication, we can clearly see asynchronous is a better choice. Then why we are not using asynchronous communication for everything? Let me know your answer in the comment section. Now let's go deep into synchronous communication between the microservices. In simple terms, synchronous means one service calls another and wait for the response before doing anything else. We usually use HTTP for synchronous communication. There are different architectural styles and approaches like we have REST which is simple and widely used. We also have GraphQL which gives the client flexibility to fetch the exactly data what they need. And we also have gRPC which is super fast and it uses protocol buffer and it's great for inter-service communication. Synchronous communication is very easy to implement and it gives you real-time results which is awesome when everything is working fine. But here is a catch. If the other service that you are calling is slow, your service also slows down. It just sits there waiting and doing nothing. And if that other service is down, then your whole flow can break. Your users get stuck, your system feels unresponsive and suddenly everything looks like it's falling apart. All because of that one slow dependency. So now the question is, how do we fix this? How do we handle situations where services are slow or completely down? That's where concepts like timeouts, retries and circuit breakers comes in. 
Now let's say service A calls service B, but service B takes forever to respond. Maybe it can be due to load or some database related issue. So instead of letting A hang forever, we configure a timeout. If no response comes in that time, service A just stop waiting and move on, maybe showing a fallback or error to the user. Now, what if the failure is temporary, like network glitch or a momentary blip? Using just a timeout there is not enough because maybe a service will work if we try again after one or two seconds. That's where retry comes in. You basically give another chance before you completely give up. But retries needs to be done smartly, not blindly. First of all, set a limit. Don't keep retrying forever. For example, retry only two or three times max. Otherwise, you will overload the system. And if the other service is down, you will just make the things worse. After one failed attempt, wait for a bit before trying again. This is called a back off. Don't just fire the next retry immediately. Give it a second to breathe. Even a better approach is increase the wait time after every retry. Like first wait for one second, then wait for two seconds and then four seconds and so on. This is called exponential back off. It gives the failing service more time to recover and avoid putting pressure again and again too quickly. Timeout and retries should always be handled by the service that is making the call. Now imagine service B is down, but everyone is still trying to call it non-stop. This situation is like a traffic jam, all the requests got stuck waiting for service B. This not only makes the service B even more overloaded, but also slows down or crashes the other calling services. This is exactly where a circuit breaker helps. It acts like a safety guard saying, hold on, stop calling the broken service. Think of a circuit breaker like a switch. When it detects that service B is down, it opens the circuit. And we know in an open circuit, electricity does not flow. It immediately fails any new calls without bothering service B at all. This saves your system resources and stops the problem from spreading. And once the service B recovers and is healthy again, the circuit breaker closes the circuit, meaning call starts going through normally again. During the open circuit, we can define a fallback response. That is the response which will be sent to the caller when the circuit is open. So using timeouts, retries and circuit breakers, we can help the system stay reliable, responsive and stable, even when the services are slowing down or failing. I think that was enough about how the synchronous communication works and how we can uh, mitigate the problems that can occur in the synchronous communication. Just one last thing in the end is the tools that we use for synchronous communication. The most common tools we will discuss. The first one is REST template, which is now deprecated in Spring Boot, but still getting used in many Spring applications. So instead of that, we can use Web Client, which is modern, reactive and recommended. We can perform both synchronous as well as asynchronous calls using Web Client. Additionally, we also have Fin Client, which is a declarative HTTP client and works well with Spring Cloud. And for gRPC communication, we can use gRPC clients, which target high performance for internal calls. Now let's move to asynchronous communication. In simple terms, asynchronous means one service sends a message to another and doesn't wait around for a response. It just moves on with its work. This is great when you don't want to get stuck waiting, especially if the other service might take some time. We usually use messaging systems for asynchronous communication. There are many options like Kafka, RabbitMQ. On the cloud provider, we also have AWS SQS or Google PubSub. These tools help services send messages reliably and let the receiver process them whenever it's ready. Let's understand how it works. Now let's say service A sends a message and immediately continue its work without waiting. Now service B receives the message, process it on its own time and can send the response back later if needed. This is called fire and forget or even driven communication. Asynchronous communication is great because your service don't get stuck waiting. If service B is slow or down, service A still keeps working. No blocking, no waiting. If you think about asynchronous and synchronous communication, asynchronous communication is a bit more complex to implement because you have to think about things like message ordering, handling duplicates and what happens if a message never gets processed. Now let's understand these issues and how we can fix them in detail. Sometimes messages don't get processed properly. Maybe it can be due to a bug or the receiving service is down for too long. 
instead of losing these messages forever we can send them to a special place called dead letter queue think of it like a quarantine zone where failed messages wait for you to investigate and fix the problem later this way you never lose important data and can keep your system healthy now since the services are working independently and not waiting for immediate responses your data might not be updated everywhere exactly at the same time your data will become consistent after some time this is called eventual consistency it means the system will become consistent over the time not instantly you have to design your system knowing that some parts may be slightly out of sync for a short period but they will catch up soon another thing to watch out for is the order of messages sometimes messages can arrive out of order or even delivered twice to handle this services needs to be idempotent idempotency means if a message is processed multiple times the result stays the same this prevents the duplication and errors in your data so just like synchronous communication has its timeout retry and circuit breaker asynchronous communication has these patterns to keep your system reliable stable asynchronous communication is perfect for the things like email processing orders or updating analytics these are the tasks that don't need instant reply but must be done reliably now the question is when should you use synchronous and when asynchronous communication now if you need an immediate response like when a user is waiting for something on the screen for example logging in checking out or fetching details in that case you can use synchronous communication on the other hand if the task can take some time or it's not urgent like sending emails processing orders or generating reports then you can opt for asynchronous communication with this the system stays fast responsive even if some services are slow or busy also the services are decoupled so they don't depend on each other being available all the time this makes your system more scalable and fault tolerant In short if you want things done now and fast go for synchronous and if you want to handle work in the background and keep your system flexible then go for asynchronous both have their own set of pros and cons and most real world systems use a mix of both depending on what is the best for that particular task All right. So that was all about how microservices talk to each other by waiting for a response or by just sending a message and moving on. But the communication is just one piece of the puzzle. Now think about this. What if one user or maybe one buggy service starts sending too many requests like thousands of requests per second? In that case even healthy service can go down because of that. So that's where rate limiting and throttling helps. They control the traffic, protect your service and keep everything stable. And that's exactly what we are going to talk about in the next video. So make sure you like, share and subscribe and don't forget to hit the bell icon so you get notified when it drops. See you in the next one. Till then, let's keep learning. Mm-hmm.